the Met. As a youth, you're sitting right there and you've seen that in the first six months there have been quick appointments that have been made by the government. Case in point, permanent secretary positions. We've also seen CS positions within the country. As someone who's sitting right there as a youth, do you feel that this government represented, that they walked their talk and in that uh, allocation that you felt that the youth were well represented in their allocations? Uh, first, before I go to that point, yes. I want to delve into what my good friend here said. He's spoken about giving our government an E in performance yes. for yes. the last five months. But I want you to look at this. Between 2018 and 2022, you know, there was the Unshake Brothers. They messed up with our economy. The government, the new dispensation of leadership comes in. Mm -hmm. They gain a dilapidated economy. And that is where the conversation starts. He should have told you yes. at first, he took part in repping our economy mm -hmm. so that now when we are repairing, the, when we are trying to heal the repped economy, they are the first people to speak about how the government is not performing. Is, is it, it not being hypocritical? Is that not an argument based on the promises that they made? Some of them, Kevin, were within the first 100 days. We're not, we're not pulling this out of the carpet and saying, well, you didn't promise. It's, it's pulling it out of, this is what you promised. This is exactly what we've seen. Now, if you promise people yes. that you're going to do this, mm -hmm. you, got, you come to government, yes. public covers are empty. You know, courtesy of these people. What are they using to, to, to you know, move around? Let me country? tell you, yes. the Anshak brothers presided over one of the looting, you know, looting sprees of our times. In this country, people went away with Kemsa money. The COVID billionaires are still working scot free. You know, the subsidy money went to the cartels. You know, I want to tell you that we have to look at when did the rain started pitting us. That is between 2018 to 2022. So even if he gives an E, yes. my, our government, we are not surprised about what he says because I just knew it will come out of his mouth. Yes. But, <laughs> but he but must. Thing, best, best of the promise, it, just, it, it was his call. Well, regardless of what you found things, you said you're going to turn them around quick and that, you haven't turned them around, then he's saying, well, with what you promised, is an E. Yes. For the food security issue, yes. we came into government when there is a drought in the country, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a drought here. You need to focus on long term. If you're a good manager, you don't focus on short-term goals. You focus on Alfred, production you wanna, you wanna to increase in? sustainability. Yes. On, on, on that particular yes. one, Kevin, can we remind you, just before you, just before you put it on spot, can we remind you what some of your leaders were saying? I um, want to take you back to one famous one. Alfred, you can, you can jump in. Okay. Yes. Thank you again, uh, Simba. Mm -hmm. I want to have Kevin know that, you know, he was talking about the Anshik brothers. Actually, uh, from 2013 up to 2022, it, is, uh, it was Ouru who was the president. Yes. Then uh, His Excellency, the deputy president, mm. that was William Root, was the deputy president by then. So I don't understand. Raila was not in government. It was Root who was the deputy president. So if you are talking about Kemp Samani, it's actually the Jubilee government. The problems we are facing, it was brought by the Jubilee government, yes. which was a formation of the retired president, the fourth, that is Uhuru Kenyatta. And the current president, who was the then TPT president, is Excellency William Samoy Ruto. Mm -hmm. Again, if he's saying that they came in and they found dot was there, so do you mean if you have been elected, for example, a governor and you found that there was a cabbage there, so you won't, you, you won't look someone to clean there because you found them there, then what were you elected to do? That is why we are cleaning the mess that it cost. So, mm -hmm. what he's saying? You know, if you are a good scholar of political science, yes. you will understand that Jubilee of 2017 to 2022 just existed in purpose for formality. Because the deputy president, the then deputy president, was never called for cabinet meetings for more than, the president never chaired even cabinet meetings for more than one year. And you understand, corona. this mm -hmm. is a country, even chairing cabinet meetings through factual means, doesn't mean contact. And you understand, that running a country is not running like a personal kiosk. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's try to peel this conversation. When did the rain started pitching us? Mm -hmm. And if you're, a, because if you're a realist, yes. you will understand mm -hmm. that Raila Odinga was a de facto deputy president. 
without but without without really going without really focusing on what happened between 2018 and up to where we are kevin but talking about the now now this government has actually taken over kevin and my question was let's first start with even the appointments that we've seen this government make as a youth, do you feel represented in that agenda? Because indeed, the manifesto spoke heavily about empowering the youth. Do you feel that you are represented in the appointment? Personally, I don't feel there's a representation of yes. the youth mm -hmm. because the president promised a fully pledged youth ministry. Yes. And that means the youth is someone between 18 to 35 years that's by the definition of our constitution. Mm -hmm. But you find, if you can find some, maybe someone occupying those offices, you know, I'm more than 35 years of age, and that begs questions. You know, the second thing, we came to the Yala elections. Was it not for the fighting of the youth and the resolve of the youth, we could not have Maina Karobia as the MP for the East African Legislative Assembly? Yes. We saw the PS positions went. Yes. We don't have a lot of youth. So we basically want to urge the president. You know, not to change the goalpost on this matter. Mm -hmm. You know, try to focus on the project of the youth. Because he told us, you know, Kenya Kwanza was basically a youth government run by the youth. That is why, as we go into picking the CIS positions, which my good friend has said it has never existed, as if he's not aware that it's existed between 2017 to 2022, mm -hmm. is that as we pick the CIS, my urge to the president, my urge to the, the leaders of the Kenya Kwanza government, is that can we consider the youths in this maybe 17 positions yes. so that we can have a conversation? Because one, you bring us an octogenarian to office to represent the youth, you will be missing a point. He doesn't understand the feeling that the youths are feeling. He doesn't understand the feeling that the university students are feeling. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand the unemployment that the youths have. Because the problem that we have in this country is the recycling of leaders. Because you go to the ground during an election, a leader is thrown out by the citizens of that county. After the formation of the dispensation of government, yes. the new dispensation of government, they are brought back, either as nominated senators, nominated MPs, cabinet ministers. Now you ask yourself questions. You know, we need to have serious conversation about the youth in this country. Yes. And I want, I want to talk to the president, if he's watching wherever he is. Can you focus on the project Kenya? Leave alone the side shows and in windows mm -hmm. of you know trying to reward these people. Yes, the, the youths, you know, the peeling block of Kenya Kwanzaa, even the UDA party, a lot of youths between in 2019 when COVID was there, when the government was harassing anyone associated with President William Ruto. Some of us stood our voices. Some of us registered the UDA party from the grassroots levels to allow the president get a chat to state house. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask the president, even in counties, and urge our UDA governors and the entire, you know, Kenya Kwanza regime and the other governors, you know, the entire structure of government from the default units to the national government, focus on the project oh, of yes. because it is the same thing, even where I come from in Bomet, mm -hmm. recycling of leaders. You, you know, you've actually seen it across the board, isn't it? Yes. Kevin, I, I want us to jump into that one as well. Alfred, on that as well. And we're going to come back to the score for Kevin because th that's one is not really giving them a score around that area. Um, I want to see exactly where the score is going to come from by the end of this conversation. Let's, let's go to those appointments that you've seen. Remember what Kevin is saying. In fact, there was a fully fledged ministry for the youth that was promised during the campaigns by those two leaders. That is uh, Rigadi Gashawa and um, Dr. William Ruto. Good. They're now in power. But if you look at the appointments that we've seen, and I want you to start from the CSS and the PSS as well, do you feel that there was an active youth agenda that was driven by those two? Actually, that was politics. Yes. And, uh, they are po and those promises, they were given during political campaigns and during, you know, when they were on rallies. Yes. So, the youth, their only importance during elections. Immediately after elections, even if you call the leader whom you campaign for and you're a youth, you won't receive your call. Have you tried to call the leader? Yes, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Can we call him out? Who is the leader, by the way? Actually, even my governor, that's Gladys Wanga. Yes. Back in Omabe. Yes. I'm a student leader at a county level. Yes. But you find that if you send a message, they will blue tick. We have a problem with the party structures in Omabe. Can you know what I'm talking We have a problem with the party structures in Omabe. Because, because, because I call my governor, yes. I call my senator, does it, does I call it my... Yes. Does it pick? Yes. You say you, you think that even yesterday yes. I was in a meeting Hold with my member of parliament, yes. the Honorable Francis Igui. Yes. Yes. He Hold picks on. our call. Hold on. You would think that's a story that any other youth in the country would say, especially youth leaders were supposed to represent youth. You say maybe you're lucky. <laughs> no, it's not lucky. That is why <laughs> yes. when we spoke about dismantling the regional policies, yes. the regional political parties. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big problem in that party called ODM. <laughs> Hold oh, on, we're, we're gonna we're gonna come we're gonna come. The youths, Kev, even I, just the want, people, I just want him to clear his point, yeah? But we're gonna come no, to yours as well. I yes. Have yes. my brother know here. Uh -huh. It is not about political party. Immediately someone has been elected, either independent or with a political party. Yes. It's that someone's duty to to be very close and to accept to work with the youths or not. So if you call a governor and he refused to pick, how now the party coming in? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you find yes. that youth are not represented even during a nomination, the political party nomination. Yes. These people actually, the people who were nominated in youth slots were maybe their kids and kids. There were no youths. Because as a youth, you will all be given uh, maybe a form to fill. Yes. Like I, I filled for Jubilee. And I was told that you are going to be nominated as a MCA. But then at the end of the day, you'll find someone with a, above 68 or 70. Who's been nominated in your position. So you'll be like, <laughs> how come? How?